Arthur Raven by Edgar Allan Poe Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of some gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. This some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate eye and ember wrote its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished to morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my book sources of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the red and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here, for evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, This some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then no longer, sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word ever spoken was the whisper word, Lenore? This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something I may win the lattice, let me see then what there is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. This the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shadow when, with many a flood and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeys matey. Not a mean stop a steady, but with mean of lord or lady, perch above my chamber door, perch upon a vest of palace just above my chamber door, perch and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beagling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the continent it were, though thy chest be shorn and shaven, though I said, or sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the lighty shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear this course so plainly, though it sounds a little meaning, little relevancy wore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpted burst above his chamber door, with such an name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul did that one word he'd outpour. Not in fatter than the other, not a fatter than he fluttered. Then I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, while others see his only stock and store, cut from some unhappy master, whom a merciful disaster follow faster, follow faster, till the songs one bored and bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy bored and bore of never, nevermore. But the raven still begging on my fancy into smiling, straight I willed a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door, then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancying, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this scream, ungainly, ghastly, gone, and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking, nevermore. 
This I said engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fall whose fiery eyes now burn into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head and his reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamplight glowed o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight glowing o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methoth, the air grew denser, perfume from an unseen censer, swooned by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite and defend thee from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind defend thee, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, Prophet, still a better devil, whether tempter send or whether tempest toss thee here ashore, this old jail undaunted, on this desert lot unshunted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet, still a better devil, by that heaven that beds above us, by that God we bow and adore, tell this soul with sorrow let an if, within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a radiant radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word sign of parting, bird of fiend, a strict up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that light that so has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from on my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting. Still is sitting. On the pallet was the palace just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamp lay over him, streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul, from out a shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.